Hey everybody, hey, it's me, Pastor Mac again. I'm here uh, to continue Bible study with you. This is Bible study video number four as we continue to talk about the Word of God. So last time I left off on uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and I read this passage of scripture to you and I'll continue today. I said uh, in chapter 3 verse 1, it says, And brethren, uh, I brethren could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal even as unto babes in Christ. He said, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither now are ye able, for ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, and ye are yet carnal and walk as men. Uh, you remember in the last part of the last study I told you, it's interesting that now in chapter three, Paul calls these believers at the Corinthian church carnal. Whereas in chapter one, he was calling them saints. And so I said to you, it is possible to be a believer and still yet be carnal. He goes on there in verse four, he says, for while one said, I am of Paul and another, I am of Apollos, ye are all carnal. He says, uh, who then is Paul? Who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye believe, even as the Lord gave to every man. Paul says, I have planted Apollos water, but God, God gave the increase. Isn't that something? He says, so neither is there he there neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watered, for God giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watered are one, and every man shall receive his own reward. So Paul was letting us know. He said, Listen, it's not about who planted, it's not about who watered, but most importantly is that God gets the increase and that or that God gives the increases, that God uses men and women vessels. And that we should never all think too highly of ourselves and realize that it's God doing what he needs to do in our lives that causes us to increase in our walk, that causes us to increase in our, our message, that causes us to increase in our churches. Paul goes on in chapter 3 and he says this down uh, in verse 11, uh, that he wants us to understand, those of us that, that are stewards of the word of God, preachers of the gospel, that not, don't get caught up in, in this nonsense of people are following you if you got you know your ministry is growing or god is not only just ministers but believers as well your influence is expanding he says because for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid which is jesus christ and he said if anybody build on this foundation gold silver precious stones wood hay stubble every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire should try every man's work. I, I like what he says here because he gives us uh, different uh, 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 items that he addresses. He says uh, gold, silver, and precious stones of these six items. And then he says wood, hay, and stubble. Now gold, silver, and precious stone are items that, that, that don't necessarily get burned by the fire, but they're purified in the fire. Gold, silver, and precious stones. And then there's the wood, the hay, and the stubble. Listen to what he says as you consider those things that I said about those six uh, groups every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire is going to try every man's work is going to try the gold it's going to try the silver it's going to try the precious stone it's going to try the wood the hay and the stubble he said if any man's work abide which he has built upon he shall receive a water if any man's work shall be burned he shall suffer loss but he himself shall be saved so as uh so as by the fire the 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 wood the hay and the stubble can be consumed but but when you're your work that you build on the foundation is out of gold, purity, silver, purity, and, and of precious stones. It will survive even the most turbulent times in our lives. And as Paul goes on to chapter 4, he continues to talk about the life of a steward, the preachers, the ministers of God. And just one, one or two verses I want to lift up out of chapter 4 for you in the time that I have. Um, in case you notice, I've gone over three minutes now. I'm trying to extend these to, to five minutes just so you don't have so many videos. In chapter 4 it says, Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. If you've been with me as a pastor for some time and you come, you may have, you know, come from another ministry or whatever. I have nothing to judge you off of. I can't judge you by your education. can't judge you by how much money you have, uh, what, what kind of car you drive or, or what how kind of house you live in. Your, uh, uh, nothing. The only thing that I, I, I look back at as a person when you come to this ministry is that how faithful are you? And I have found that, that every time I, I look at the faithfulness of individuals, I find people who become great leaders in this ministry. And so I have the same principle as Paul. More of it for man is, and more of it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. The question becomes, my brothers and sisters, how faithful are you 
he's talking to this Corinthian church about being faithful. And he says that that uh, that, that we we as, as faithful men in God, we take what God has given us and we're not puffed up, amen. But but we, we we do what God has called us to do. We don't get caught up in the words that we can use and the speech that we can deliver. But but we know that that only what we do for God is it's not in our word, amen. But but it's in the power of God as He finishes out this chapter that enables us to do what we're gonna do. I'm gonna continue, amen, with video number five and just to, in your next session, amen. But remember, for every season, there is a word in season. God bless you.